is this grid following versus grid forming. It's an important aspect of understanding what can your inverter actually do. So grid following being meaning exactly what it's saying is that it's following the grid. It is going to mimic whatever the utility provides. This is what happens with our grid direct inverters. Our, those inverters cannot create their own uh, sine wave. They can only follow what the grid supplies to them. And so they are grid following. And we do have battery systems that are grid following. They're only there to provide grid support services. Again, the demand charge management, energy arbitrage, maybe there's some um, other features that the utility wants to have out of those. Those inverters, there are inverters, I should say, out there that do not have the ability to form a sine wave, and so they, those would be grid following. The grid forming inverters, on the other hand, are, you know, I would say you're going to have to, when you're doing a resilient system, if you're doing something with backup, your inverter has to be able to provide a, uh, a sine wave, it has to be grid forming. So it has to be able to provide that output that the loads can run off of. And if you have those inverters, those PV inverters that are grid following, that your AC coupling, that battery inverter has to be able to form that grid to allow the uh, inverters to connect to it. So all important stuff to understand, you know, kind of what their roles are and how they how they're um, interacting with the utility or not, um, as the case may be, and, you know, kind of what those functions are and how they're going to um, how they're going to be able to make sure that they are uh, working properly.